Hi, hello gorgeous. How are you? It's Cindy the Old Broad here coming to you live on a Thursday evening after a full day's work. Makeup not looking its best. But I wanted to do this tag, this Guilty Pleasures tag. Uh, several people have done it and uh, just given a blanket. Hey, everybody who watches do it. And I've not done a tag before, so I think it's time. So here we go with the Guilty Pleasures. Number one, TV show you love but should not confess to. I have three or four of them. Um, I'm very fond of um, uh, the Housewives franchise. Um, in my case, I watched the Real Housewives of Orange County and uh, the Real Housewives of New York City. Although since Jill Zarin left, I, it's hardly worth watching, but I hang in there hoping maybe they'll get her back someday. They probably won't. Um, I also uh, used to watch a show called Sister Wives. I just don't watch it too much anymore. I don't have time. Uh, but it was about um, some women who are members of the, I guess it's called Latter Day Saints Fundamentalist Church. Um, and uh, it's one man, and I think he's got four or five wives. And uh, it was just interesting to see their family dynamic. I liked that, really, from a sociological standpoint. And then the other one is a show called Oddities, which is about um, a store in New York City. I can't remember the name of it right off hand. I haven't been able to catch this show in uh, about six months. Uh, but they sell unusual items, like um, things that used to belong to Harry Houdini or um, navel hair or... Uh, odd taxidermy. Anyway, those are the strange shows I like and should not confess to. Food, what do you eat? I don't really think I eat anything weird. I like pretty much everything except I won't eat liver. I won't eat eggplant. Um, as far as sweets and things go, chocolate is sort of at the bottom of my list. I have a real preference for uh, fruit sorts of things and uh, caramel sorts of things. Um, I do like sushi and some people probably con consider that to be odd, so that's my only weird food. Um, music that I love, this is number three, music that I love and others just cringe at. First of all, I have to say I don't think there's any genre of music that I can tell you I don't like it. Um, but I, I certainly have preferences and um, I'm sort of shocked that so many people say I don't like rap. I like every music but rap. Rap isn't music. I think that's a vast generalization and they need to listen to a little more rap before they say that personally. Um, my least favorite music would be country western music of the 50s to mid 60s and i i hate to say that because that's my father's favorite music but i just don't like it um i worked in classical radio for three and a half years so i know a lot about classical music and i love a lot of classical music particularly uh, Eric Satie, uh, Sergei Prokofiev, and Dmitry Shostakovich. Those are my three favorite uh, composers. And, but my very, very favorite, favorite music of all is um, jazz of the 1920s, 30s, and maybe the first half of the 40s. That is my absolute favorite music, hands down. And I don't know if others cringe at it or not. <laughs> I just love it. Okay, uh, number four, my guilty online habit. Okay, I'm, yeah, okay, I have two. One which I don't practice anymore. Um, I used to play an online game called Second Life, and as I understand it, the makers of this game just sort of put the game platform out there and told the users, okay, you make the game. And uh, like many online games, I guess it's composed of various sims. So 
there are a number of sims. Some are for role-playing games. Um, some are like where you dress up in costume and pretend to be different characters. But by and large, the users of this game created another life, and hence the name Second Life, so that if you, a player, go onto this game, you have a little avatar that you can make look any way you want to. Mine looks like me at about age 28. And you have a job, and you have an apartment, and you go places and do things. And um, the job I had was as a disc jockey in uh, various music venues. And so, so if you imagine it from my point of view, I'm standing on stage looking out at a room full of people dancing. And the lower left-hand corner, I have a little chat box where I can see what these people are typing in to the chat box. I can speak, they can hear me, but they can't speak to me because you can imagine the chaos that would be because I'm standing up there playing music. And um, so if you imagine from their point of view, they're in a room dancing and they see their partner and all the other people and they see me standing on stage behind a microphone announcing this music. So um, most, I mean, I played a variety of music. Um, I did play some classical. I played a lot of jazz. I played um, something that I think is called death rock. Um, and I played... But I played mainly um, 1920s, 30s, and 50s, blues, jazz, and swing. And um, for a while, I owned my own nightclub. And uh, when I did that, I wanted a little more variety. So um, I usually played Sunday nights, and I played uh, Dixieland jazz and um, Zydeco and uh, New Orleans specific. Yeah, New Orleans jazz. So anyway... That used to be my guilty online habit. I don't really do that anymore. I quit about two years ago because I just sort of overwhelmed myself and burnt myself out, and I couldn't do it now if I wanted to since I have a full-time job. But uh, my guilty habit now, I would say, is YouTube and mainly uh, watching Bunny Meyer, uh, otherwise known as Graveyard Girl, um, She's got years of videos that I've only begun to watch, and I enjoy her enormously. She's a, a native of Houston, or Pearland, just outside of Houston, and I'm a native Houstonian, and I mean Houston, Texas. And Bunny just reminds me of everything that's wonderful about Houston, Texas. She's a joy and a delight, and if you've not watched her, please do. Uh, what I love to wear but shouldn't. In my case, it's not a clothing article. I think I pretty much dress age appropriate, but it's this. The ponytail. I am really hair challenged, and as you will have observed watching my videos, either my hair is down straight or it's in a ponytail, or I'll um, take this thing and put it on top of my head. Now, obviously, that's when I'm at home. And I'm just really tempted to just cut it all off. If I could find uh, some sort of hairstyle that's short that would be easy to maintain because I'm a hair doofus even when my hair is short. So any suggestions, feel free. Okay, movie I should not love so much, but I do. This is number six. I kind of, I don't really like this question <laughs> because, I mean, according to who I shouldn't like it. Um, Two of my favorite movies are Vertigo, which is uh, Hitchcock, in which Jimmy Stewart plays a man obsessed with a woman who he thinks is dead. And um, my other favorite is The Talented Mr. Ripley, which the novel by Patricia Highsmith was one of the first novels to feature an anti-hero. And um, in this particular movie, um, well, it's really warped. It's really warped. Uh, it's about a murderer, but he's the hero. So uh, I do like, I mean, I love pretty much everything except espionage and westerns, but uh, I do mainly like um, psychological suspense or dramas or love stories or comedies. But those are my two very favorite movies, and I think I should love them as much as I do. So I'm not 
I'm not answering this question very well, am I? Okay. Next, number seven is a um, funny habit that I have that people comment on. People have commented on this over the years, and uh, it is sort of, it's a funny story. I'm going to give you a little demonstration. Okay, sorry. Imagine that this is a fork, okay, and that this is like the tine sticking down. Sometimes um, when I'm sitting at the dinner table and we're just involved in conversation, I'll be holding the fork over my plate and I'll just be kind of going like that. Anyway, my ex and other people have commented on this. And uh, I have to tell you a backstory about this, though. Um, I was adopted at birth and um, two parents who were grandparent age who had no other children. And uh, when my adoptive father had been dead for 15 years and my adoptive mother had been dead for six years, I um, located my birth parents. And my mother had always said, you know, when they passed away that I could do that, but I was just theirs as long as they were around. And I agreed with that. Uh, but I did locate my birth parents. And now I have uh, two parents, two step parents and seven siblings and I relocated from Texas to Mississippi to be near them and um, the first time we went out to dinner with my birth mother um, we went to breakfast the whole group it was my my birth mother my stepfather and two of my sisters and we were sitting at uh, breakfast at I guess it was one of these Shoney's places and uh, my ex-husband looked over uh, across the table and my birth mother was sitting there doing this with her fork over her plate and he shrieked just shrieked at the top of his lungs look at the fork so I just thought you'd find that funny uh, it's a funny habit but apparently it runs in families it's genetic okay and last but not least number eight makeup look that I love but is just so wrong and at this point, I want to say, Kathy A, look away, look away, because here it is. I know you loathe it, but it's red eyeshadow, and I'm wearing it today just for you. I'm not going to pull in too close because I'm having a real dry thing going on around my eyes, and it's scary for me, and if it's scary for me, it would be horrifying for you. Okay, that's it. That's my guilty pleasures. Hope you enjoyed. Um, I'll be back with you, you know, in a week or a couple days with something else wonderful. Oh, almost oh. forgot before I go. I wanted to say a happy Easter to all of you out there who celebrate. Chag uh, Kesher to those who are celebrating Passover this weekend. And to those of you who don't celebrate anything, have a great weekend. Love you all. Bye.